week on One Devotion. We meet a member of a true globetrotting family. One man's trip from hardship to success in the Euroleague. Two Olympiakos teammates compare notes. And the top five spectacular plays of round four. In a sport famed for globetrotting, perhaps no family deserves the globetrotter distinction more than the family of EA7 Milan centre Sean James. James and his three brothers have now played professionally on four different continents, all except Africa, Australia and Antarctica, although he's not counting those places out at all. I don't know no teams out there, but if it is, we'll be there. Until the James brothers left Guyana together when Sean was a boy, basketball wasn't even their chosen sport. Cricket, not much soccer. We played a little cricket though. <laughs> So we didn't play a lot of basketball and, and got in it at all it's until we got to Brooklyn when we fell in love with the game. Cricket's loss was basketball's gain, as oldest brother Gordon plays the trail to the pros for Lex, Sean and Delroy after him. We kind of, you know, followed in his footsteps. When we saw that basketball was the way out of Brooklyn, you know, we, we definitely took that. Although he was far away, Gordon James made sure the lessons he learned far from home reached his younger siblings. My older brother always told me about being a professional, you know, just yeah, your first job could be your last job. So just approach it, you know, with a positive mindset and, and give it your all. When his younger brother Delroy came to Europe, Sean was just as ready to help. You're there for the advice. You don't just pour it on people, you know. You're there as a leaning block. If you need it, you know I'm there, just let me know. So that's kind of how we pass on the advice. As such, when he and Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv beat Delroy's team by 50 in an Israeli league game, Sean took it easy on little brother. It's not much bragging rights, you know. You give him a, a pat on the shoulder and tell him good job. <laughs> You don't rub it in too much. <laughs> From their far-flung locations, the James brothers rely on technology to stay in touch during the season. But this summer, Sean hosted a holiday barbecue that he plans as a new family tradition. With his former Maccabi teammate and new neighbour Ricky Hickman at the event, a major topic was their EuroLeague triumph, despite James being injured. We spoke about last year how much fun it was and even though I wasn't able to play, those guys you know, knew what I meant to the team and you know just the chemistry off and on the court. So it was no distinction for me playing or not playing. It was just a, a good ride. James hopes that the Euroleague title talk will stay in the family and inspire his younger brother Delroy to new heights in the future. He's playing in Europe, so he understands it a lot more. And stuff like that is goals for him, and you know, goals that he'll try to chase after because he's still young. With a fifth brother who's not professional but loves basketball, the James family could put a starting five on the floor to compete with perhaps any other family in the world. Gordon, Lex, myself, my other brother Devon that just plays in like every New York tournament known to man, and then Delroy. Their three sisters won't come off the bench, however. They're the most girly girls you might ever meet. And they have nothing to do with sports, absolutely nothing. On the rare occasion when he gets to share the court with one of his brothers, as he and Delroy will do again in the Italian league this season, Sean knows that it's a true family affair. It's just a blessing. It's not even, oh, I'm gonna try to kill him, he gonna try to kill me. To be honest, you just, you know, just play hard and enjoy for what it is. Just enjoy the moment.
Valencia basket veteran Romain Sato took a much tougher route to success than most players in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. The 33-year-old, who won the title with Panathinaikos in 2011, was born in the Central African Republic and found himself growing up in a horrible situation as the country was plunged into civil war. It's very dangerous, you know, we can't go nowhere. It's hard. We don't have food, we don't have anything to eat. I mean, you, you just gotta hope when things slow down. We can't go outside, we're just in the house. All we can hear is just a gun shot anywhere, all day, all night. I mean, your family trying to do whatever they can to get you food, but it's never easy. You might be lucky to eat today, you might not. It might be three, four days before you can eat anything. So, I mean, it's, it's tough life. Amazingly, basketball offered Romain a route to a better life. After taking up the sport as a teenager, within a few years, he was heading for the United States. I got a chance to start playing for my friend basketball, and as soon as I started, I, I never stopped. Just working hard, you know, and we had a one guy from our country living in D.C., so he helped me with a uh, change program student. So that's when I get a chance to go in the U.S. from school. The transition to life in the U.S. wasn't easy, especially at first when he moved to the frozen northeastern state of Ohio and had a severe case of culture shock. I don't, don't speak no English. You go to Ohio, it's snow, cold. I never see snow before. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just crazy. At times, Romain even felt like giving up and moving back to Africa but he kept himself motivated by the thought of helping his family back home. It's hard for me in my first years because I feel like, man, I can't do it, I have to go back home. But I felt like God brought me there for the reason, you know, so I have to work hard and hopefully one day I can help my family. That's why I don't have my mind. I said, now I'm out. So I'm the only one got out, so I have to make sure I can take care of the rest of them. So I have to work hard and I see it in front of me there's no room for me to quit. The rest is history, as Romain received the scholarship to play basketball at college and has subsequently rose to become a EuroLeague champion with Panathinaikos in 2011. But he has never forgotten home and is now attempting to improve the lives of youngsters in his native country by organising and paying for basketball camps every summer. Basically, I do for the peace. Because a lot of kids don't have a chance to play basketball, I'm trying to get some organization to help them at least go in the camp and provide for them to at least do something, be fun, just forget about all these things going on now, just to focus on a little bit positive things. You know we can do some positive for them, but that's the only thing I'm trying to do this summer, just to get their mind help and cheer them up a little bit. Let's see what happened in round four. A scoring milestone for Real Madrid, an MVP performance for Jalgiris and the young guns of Anadolu Efes kept those teams in the top half of Group A after round four. Still perfect, Real Madrid opened the week by blasting off for 115 points, the most by any EuroLeague team in seven years, to defeat Dinamo Sassari in a shootout. Felipe Reyes scored inside, JC Carroll was perfect outside, and Sergio Rodriguez's career-high 12 assists helped Madrid match its week-old EuroLeague record of 33. Anadolu FS used Dario Saric's best EuroLeague scoring performance yet, 18 points, and a boost off the bench from teenager Furkan Korkmaz for a valuable road win over Nizhny Novgorod. Jalgiris outlasted Unix Kazan as James Anderson rocked the house with 27 points and 11 rebounds, while Vaidas Kariniauskas played game-saving defence for their team's third straight win. The standings show Madrid riding high, but Jalgiris and FS are right behind while Sassari needs a win to join the race for all-important fourth place. 
Seska Moscow survived its battle of unbeaten teams against Unicaja Malaga, while Sedevita Zagreb stunned champions Maccabi Electra and Alba Berlin roared to its first victory. The biggest shock of round four came on Thursday night, when previously winless Sedevita Zagreb travelled to face champions Maccabi Electra and delivered a commanding performance to claim a 73-83 victory, as veteran Rocco Ukic led the way with 17 points and 6 assists, while Jeremy Pargo netted 24 in defeat for Maccabi. On Friday, Alba Berlin brushed aside Limoges to secure both its first win of the season and its biggest ever Euroleague victory while Milos Teodosic netted 27 points as Seska defeated Unicaja by 10 in Moscow, with Jason Granger and Mindaugas Guzminskas both scoring 20 for the visitors. Seska's victory over Unicaja gives it sole ownership of the group's top spot and wins for Sedevita and Alba creates a three-way tie for the all-important fourth place. FC Barcelona held its nerve to survive a thriller against Fenerbahce while Panathinaikos gained its second successive home win and Turov impressed against Bayern. Game of the week lived up to its billing in Istanbul, with a back and forth contest between hosts Fenerbahce and Barcelona going right down to the final shot of the game, which was missed by Emir Predzic to give the visitors an exciting two-point win partly thanks to a perfect 4 of 4 three-point shooting by Brad Olison. Dimitris Diamantidis dished eight assists and Esteban Batista top scored with 15 points as Panathinaikos won easily over EA7 Milan. Turuv enjoyed another big night from the prolific Damian Kulig, scoring 22 points to set up an 11-point win over Bayern. Barcelona's hard-earned win keeps the Spanish team perfect and one game ahead of Panathinaikos, with Fenerbahce a game further back and three teams tied for fourth place. Unbeaten Olympiakos lasted the course against determined Cervena Zvezda, Galatasaray racked up the points against Neptunas Klaipeda, and Valencia claimed the spoils in a Spanish derby. An enormous crowd gathered in the Combank Arena as group leaders Olympiakos faced Cervena Zvezda, and in a hard-fought defensive battle, the Greek visitors led all the way, but had to withstand a spirited comeback and eventually crossed the line thanks to nerveless free throws in an intense atmosphere from October League MVP Vasilis Panoulis. Galatasaray veteran Sinan Guler delivered 18 points in a comfortable high-scoring home win over Neptunas, and Valencia responded superbly after falling behind early on against Laboral Cucha, fighting back to win by 10 on the back of 23 points from Luke Harangodi. Olympiakos is the only team to enjoy a two-game cushion at the head of its group and a competitive race for the top 16 looks guaranteed, with three teams tied for second place. Hello, I'm Brent Petway. And I'm Brian Dunson. What's the funniest thing you've seen on a basketball court? When I was younger, I was watching a player, he drove to the basket, and he went for a layup. Somebody tried to foul him, and they pulled his pants down. And he wasn't wearing. <laughs> wasn't wearing it. <laughs> wasn't wearing it. No tights. No uh, tights. <laughs> nice. What superstitions do you have before each game you play? Right before we go out, before we break it up and say Olympiacos. I uh, my favorite wrestler was CM Punk, and I look down, get down on one knee. I tap my imaginary watch because it's not right yet. And I tap it again, and once it's right, scream out, it's clobbering time, and then I know it's ready to go. That, that gets me ready. Yeah, that gets all of us fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Best pregame meal? I mean, my favorite food is lasagna, and it actually works That's you know, a good to, one. to have lasagna before the game. So, you know, I, the problem is I eat too much of it. So, 
then I'll be a little heavy on the court. But you know, just you know, one slice. I try to limit myself. One slice, I'm good. Do you ever dream about basketball games? Well, it was more of a nightmare. Spanulis was coming down, and he passed me the ball wide open under the basket, but I couldn't jump, and I couldn't make the basket. Every time I, I'd miss it, it, it hit the rim, and the fall right off. I get the rebound back, but the same thing would keep happening over and over again. I just, I couldn't do it. Is there any rule you'd like to change in basketball? Flopping, <laughs> because I'm a defender, and I hate guarding guys who flop all the time. I would, man, I would change the rule of flopping. She'd get fined 1,000 euros <laughs> for every flopping call. Ah, who dunks better, me or you, and why? Come on, man. <laughs> you already know the answer to that. For people that don't know, uh, yesterday in practice, Brent picked the ball up from the floor, from a standstill, put the ball between his legs and dunked it. So easily, he's the best dunker uh, out of the two of us. But they call you Dunkston. That's because I dunk often. You know, I get you know around the basket. It's, e it's easier for me. Well, guys, you've heard enough from us. I'm Brent Petway. I'm Brian Dunstan. See you later. Six years after he was a youngster abroad getting his feet wet in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague, point guard Mihal Hilinski is back representing PGE Turuv Skorzelek, where he spent the last four seasons putting his experience to work to become a Polish champion. We are here like one big family. It's a really special place to, to play because you feel like, like at home, you know, and I'm here for a long time and it's really like second home for me. The town of Skorselek is so small, Hilinski says, that it's normal for fans to meet players frequently in the streets. Most of the time when we meet each other on the street or in some shop, maybe in groceries, uh, we talk, you know, they, they always support us. Uh, sometimes, you know, they are pretty angry when we lose some games, but that's uh, normal. That's the difference between playing in a big city or, or, or a small city. Improving year by year since Michal arrived has allowed PGE Turów to win the Polish title and earn the right to play in the top European competition, a reward for those dedicated fans he meets in the streets. I think these people deserve to have the Euroleague team and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that we finally will play in the Euroleague. It's a big uh, opportunity for us as a players and big challenge for the, the club and also a big uh, opportunity for, for uh, fans to see the best teams in, in, in Europe. This is not, however, Michal's debut in the Euroleague. In 2006, he helped Unica Hamalika make its only Final Four run ever. Having just turned 20, Shilinski played alongside recent world champions Carlos Cabezas and Bernie Rodriguez, and Olympic gold medalist Pepe Sanchez, who helped him develop from pure young talent into a Euroleague-level pro. I learned uh, a lot from them, you know, they are really professionals, so I, I was young, uh, I could see how, uh, what, have to, what I have to do to become a better player. I learned a lot to play uh, when I was playing abroad. First of all, I, I learned how to live by myself. I was a young guy and I it was, first of all, it was difficult to to get used to you know new country, new language, uh, new team. But uh, after like a couple months, uh, I start to feel better in, in Spain and I learned the language. I, I learned how to be a grown man and that's, uh, and I learned how to be professional. Having to live in another country forced young Michal to adapt and grow up fast an experience that helped him become the leader he is now as he tries to guide PGE Turuv through its own first Euroleague season. Welcome back Turkish Airlines Euroleague fans, welcome to Who Said Newcomer? 
Today we're with Unix Kazan and two new players, Curtis Gerald and Keith Langford. Let's begin. Hi guys, let's see how much you know about your new city and team. Firstly, tell us a well-known monument of Kazan. One on my uh, Kremlin. Question two, what is the city's population? Uh, three million. Three million, three million. Uh... Tell us a typical dish of Russia. Borscht. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say something in Russian? Pragila. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who's the team's captain? Miko. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Which of your teammates has spent the most time at the club? Uh, 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 Antipo. Can you tell us the name of the club president? President. President. <laughs> we got a president. <laughs> what are the colours of the team logo? Green, white, orange. Okay, guys, it's time for the last question. When was the team founded? 65. <laughs> 1965. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that's not right. But Keith Langford is the winner, 4-2. Anderson produced a virtuoso performance for Jalgiris Kaunas on Thursday night, playing a key role in his team's third consecutive victory and earning himself the accolade as the B-Win MVP for round four of the regular season. The 26-year-old registered 27 points, more than a third of his team's total, and added 11 rebounds as Jalgiris maintained its strong start to the season with a 77-71 victory over visiting Unix Kazan. In addition to his double-double, Anderson added four assists, three steals, a block and drew seven fouls, adding up to a personal index rating of 38, the highest of any player so far in the current Turkish Airlines EuroLeague campaign. The B-Win MVP for round four of the regular season, in emphatic fashion, is James Anderson. Let's check out the top five plays of the week. Number five, Madrid, Spain. Real Madrid on a fast break. The ball comes to Sergio Yule. He sends it up for Marcus Slaughter. And the alley -oop dunk is finished in style. Real Madrid's offense operating at its best. Number four, Istanbul, Turkey. Fast break for Fenerbahce. The ball to Nemanja Bjelica, but Thomas Satoransky with an awesome block. Sweeping it all the way to the scorer's table. Incredible leap and timing from Satoransky. Number three, Athens, Greece. Last week, Dimitris Diamantidis reached 1,000 career assists. Have there been any better than this? A full court pass to give Julian Wright an easy layup. A master at work, a missile from Diamantidis. Number two, Istanbul, Turkey. FC Barcelona got a big win at Fenerbahce on Thursday, and here was a momentum changer. Marcelino Huertas, incredible wild buzzer-beating triple at the end of the first half. Picture perfect from Marcelino Huertas. Number one player of the week in Madrid, Spain, Dinamo Sassari. Shane Lawal looks for a pass, decides he doesn't need one. He goes over two defenders. An incredible dunk from Shane Lawal, the player of the week. five marks the halfway point of the regular season next Thursday and Friday with a full slate of showdowns guaranteed to move you to devotion. In Group A, Anadolu FS tests itself against unbeaten runaway train Real Madrid as two of the Euroleague's top long-distance shooters, Matt Janning for the home team and JC Carroll for Los Blancos, get ready to duel from downtown. Also in Group A, an all-Russian derby between Unix Kazan and Nizhny Novgorod, while Sassari seeks a now crucial first win at home against Jalgiris. In Group B, 
Maccabi Tel Aviv visit Unicaja Malaga with second place on the line. The hosts put experience in the paint with one former EuroLeague winner, Fran Vasquez. Well, do it all, Devin Smith leads the current champs in search of an ambush. Elsewhere, Sedevita Zagreb and Alba Berlin battle for a step up in the Group B standings, while Seska tries to stay unbeaten on the road in Limoges. Group C offers up a EuroLeague classic when FC Barcelona and Panathinaikos, owners of seven EuroLeague titles between them this century, follow their legendary leaders, Juan Carlos Navarro and Dimitris Diamantidis, into a battle that newcomers like Justin Dolman and AJ Slaughter could also decide. Two more Group C showdowns next week feature Fenerbahce Ulker visiting Bayern Munich and EA7 Milan hosting PGE Turuv. Group D features surefire fun in the game of the week as Red Hot Olympiakos welcomes Galatasaray Liv Hospital to Piraeus with October B-Win MVP Vasilis Panoulis ready to match wits and talent with veteran master Carlos Arroyo. Also in Group D, Neptunas Klaipeda hosts Valencia and Cervena Zvezda visits Laboral Vitoria in the continuing battle for top 16 positions. Watch it all next week in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague.